Yes, the country perspectives continue and we are now looking at Kenya and finishing off with Senegal. So Kenya, hello. I'm looking forward to October to meet up with my former school friends from Greensteads reunion after all these years. Some of us have passed away. It's very sad to know that Sonia is not going to be there. George Rokara is not going to be there. It's really sad. But I'm looking forward to see everybody else. You know, who makes it. There have been other reunions and it's a very special situation uh, for many reasons. Um, I went to, to 10 different schools in Africa and uh, in Kenya, my father <laughs> made me, exposed me to uh, an elite school, which is Greensteads, and to a totally village school. You know, where, my God, uh, at Greensteads, we had everything. We had tennis, hockey, rugby, um, horses, you name it. I mean, we had breakfast, uh, uh, mid-morning tea break, or whatever, whatever you want to call it, then lunch, then afternoon, and then coffee at night after dinner and all of that. It was just uh, chemistry lab, physics lab, biology lab. You know, my God. So we had Bunsen burners and everything that you needed for experiments. My dad took me out of that school because I'd become too stupid and complacent. So I said, you know, I'll teach you what Africa really is about so you can really stop being such an idiot. So I went to a village school uh, in Motomo, Sindu Secondary School. Man, we didn't have a single laboratory. All, all the science, science experiments were done in theory. The teacher copying it out of a book, writing it on a blackboard, we're supposed to copy it down and we just imagine in our minds what a Bunsen burner was. I don't even think there were photographs of Bunsen burners and litmus paper and all of that, you know. And my God, um, uh, Greensteads, you had football boots and everything and all of that. When, when we were doing sports in senior secondary, I was probably the only person with shoes, so they told me to take off the shoes because I could not be competing with the, with the barefoot ones. And man, I was supposed to run a race. I lost the race because my feet were not strong enough to run on the, on the ground. You know, so uh, my dad taught us through example, you know, to really appreciate that, you know, this privilege that you have with access to Europe and European standards, it comes at a price. Me as a Danish man, that's my dad. Me as a Danish man, I'm only here to teach you the truth, man. So this Danish man, he took me to... Uh, he took me to he, he took me to to the everywhere in the countryside to every project that he was working with you know to observe and see so i am rooted in what our people need whether it's uh, farm input schemes or corporate cooperatives soil conservation and all of that you know it really was an education by my danish dad and that's what i really want to promote in terms of so kenya greensteads and all of that Really important, but another thing the dad really did for us in Kenya was take us out to see the wildlife. You know, what a great thing we saw. We went to Mount Kilimanjaro and we went to visit Tanzania, and uh, when we lived in Tanzania, and Mount Kenya, you know, Lake Baringo, you know, and all all this Isiolo. The wildlife it's so captivating down to Mombasa. So Kenya. Kenya, we are, we are really looking at, at the conservation of wildlife. Of course, we're going to do it all the way from Cape Town to Cairo, but uh, the perspective country, that, the, world, the country that's taking us into the perspective will be Kenya. And um, um, the, Maasai, the, the Mara Lion Project that I'm, I am now in contact with was suggested to me by a, a Greenstead student who came on much later. So already you can see the direction that it's going through and many of my schoolmates from Greensteads um, would be very interested in, uh, in in wildlife conservation in Africa in general. So that's Kenya, okay? Another thing about Kenya is that it's probably, uh, reggae is the most popular music in, in, in Kenya, so there's always that part of it. Um, then there's Senegal. Senegal, I went to Senegal because of a very beautiful woman who I met at a festival here in Denmark. The minute I saw her, I said to myself, that's my wife. And she became my wife and I married her and we got a beautiful daughter and what I got from Senegal mainly was an introduction to the Murid movement you know uh, Sheikh Amadou Bamba and of course his descendants right down to Serene Salio who I met 
and so the Murid movement I went to Tuba I made friends at the Sheikh Anta Job uh, University and Sheikh Anta Job's books were the foundation for, for, for my really moving you know I mean the reason why I met my wife was because I was actually presenting I was presenting um, the Sheikh Anta Job's Egyptology at a festival where she had come as an artist so to actually meet a girl from the country where this professor had come from and it was it was fantastic because even the musician who came to play the festival was Baba Mal so um, it was fantastic it was a fantastic time and out of that came my beautiful daughter Aminata who is so loved by everybody and so she's my friend so the Murid movement is all around the world Aminata's grandmother used to travel to Dubai uh, Canada you remember that video, Sianada, Sianada. <laughs> uh, Dubai, uh, Sp not Spain, France, maybe Turkey, I can't remember. But anyway, she used to work with the bank and uh, she died, bless her soul, she was my good friend. Um, and Ali Matu, my ex-wife, who of course I still have great love for. But she has been a great support in my project in that um, she really gave me the support that I needed even though we divorced. And even the access to my daughter without any drama whatsoever. I don't think I've ever said a bad word about my, uh, my, my wife until of course much later when I can talk with my daughter about certain issues and say, well, that's why we divorced and whatever, blah, blah. Um, but I, I don't think she said anything bad about me either to my daughter because we've really been strong and good together. And she remarried, she remarried a, a brother who she subsequently divorced, but he was a good brother and we, we worked out our, our differences, whatever the needs was when it came to him needing, uh, needing, uh, verification of the connection to Denmark so they could get immigration access and to be there for my daughter and I asked him I said bro I've got this mission for Africa you know because we're all aware about the immigration from 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 uh, Africa over the sea and people drowning at sea so we're all conscious of this we were like brothers and I said to him bro please you know um, you're going to be Hester's father I've got to do this mission It's the only way that I can do it Please be there for her, but if she steps out of line, don't be afraid, be a father. I would punish her. <laughs> I give you the permission to punish her if you have to, but please love my daughter. And he looked at me and saw how serious I was and how serious I was in making it easy for him to, to become the partner now that me and my wife had divorced. And he said he would do it. But then he went to my partner and told her that, look, whenever Jimmy comes to, um, whenever Jimmy comes to Denmark, I don't want him to spend money on a hotel or a hostel or anything because I know he's struggling for our people. He must come here and stay with his daughter. So whenever I arrived, they made sure that my daughter had, she was young enough to sleep in my bed. Um, and we just spent the time together. They would get out of the way and just leave the house as though it was ours. We had our little life, me and my daughter. And so we were able to keep a contact for as long as to where we're now doing business, which leads me to my publishing company. King of Africa Publishing is more or less administered by my daughter. When you buy the demos, I don't call them albums, I call them demos because we haven't recorded them yet until we get the Jamaicans in the studio, all the Jamaicans in the studio to record every demo that I've made. They are demos because this is reggae music and reggae music is only done properly by Jamaicans. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. We don't try to fake this. This has to be done by Jamaicans. Luckily for me, I met Peter Tosh's bass player in Los Angeles and we just might get them in on board and doing this, but you know, there's a whole new crop of reggae musicians who can really represent this music properly under the title of UNESCO Reggae. And of course, Robert Cavallo from UK has done some great work and given me some templates on which to present my, my demos, which is very good. Um, but having said all of that, my daughter is into the music industry as well and she's recording some great reggae tracks uh, with uh, some of Denmark's best, best reggae producers. 
So um, working hand in hand in the publishing and the, uh, and the establishment of, of woman power in reggae music through Cool Mom Records, um, that's the connection to, to Senegal, I guess. You know, so uh, honoring Senegal, honoring womanhood in Africa through Senegal is a divine calling, which I am very glad I heeded and that I have uh, Aminata and Ali Matu. And not only that, but my stepdaughter, Aisha. To say that they're my family and that I have serious, strong, female, black, African representation in Senegal through those three ladies and I'll do anything for them. Aisha, Aisha was funny. When Aisha was a baby, she was the first, the first child for Karim. She followed me everywhere and I was wondering why this child loves me so much. And it, it, it's just, maybe it's just because, maybe it's just because, just because it's love, you know? And so they're growing and we have to see what we can establish in Senegal for the future. But definitely from the teachings of Selin Salio and um, Tuba, I can almost not even talk. Let's look up to see what God is going to do. You know? Abayafal, Senegal, Teranga. Yeah, my daughter Aminata. So, that's the perspective for West Africa.